Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing a couple products on this build. Now, the reason why I didn't release the Maiden video is because I just don't want to do those videos. I want to actually use the thing for a while, come back and report at least something that happened with me. So let's talk about this build if you missed it. Now, I built this on the channel maybe two weeks ago. It's, it's a 6S build. It's rocking the iFlight Vertigo frame with custom cut carbon fiber camera plates, which I designed, which makes it look a little bit nicer. It's using the Mamba 2207 1750 KV motors because it's a 6S setup. For the stack inside, because this frame only takes 20 by 20 stacks. So for the stack inside, I decided to go with the Hollybro Tico 32 F7 Mini. It's a 20 by 20 stack that comes with the ESC, which is 6S capable, and also the F7 flight controller, and as well as it comes with a VTX. I'll have it linked down below, the stack and the, the motors. Also the Cadex Rattel, which to be honest, it was it was good. That's it. I mean, it's just the camera was with decent, with good quality. It's nothing like noticeably different than anything else, in my opinion, at least. Because on the same day, I flew with a Fox Sierra Falcor, which basically was the Copus too, because I was testing the Fox Sierra HD uh, box cam. And I didn't really notice that much of a difference, but you know, this is personal preference. Anyways, the camera's good. It has lower latency than most though. So keep that in mind. How did this perform? Well, first of all, you have to take its weight into consideration. Its weight is around, just like this, is 322 grams. And this is a 6S build. And I was running 1300 milliamp 6S LiPos, which were infinities. So it would roughly total, with a GoPro obviously, it'll roughly total around possibly 420 grams. So it is a pretty heavy one. This is not a light quad. And the performance was spectacular. I was actually quite surprised with the performance. And why do I say that? Well, I, w I was really hoping that these were gonna perform good because I tried the, uh, the higher KV version of these on obviously the, the new diatone. I'll have it linked down below. It's my favorite quadcopter, by the way. M my favorite BNF because it's so freaking fast. So I was really hoping that these were not gonna disappoint and be as good as those motors. But when I finished building this, it turns out to be a pretty heavy quad. So I was a little bit hesitant saying, ah, it'd probably perform, maybe it'll perform pretty decently. I didn't know what to expect. But to my surprise, they performed like premium motors. It was a really punchy quad. Something about the motors, it doesn't end there. The motors, the prop nuts on them are not really great. Uh, I did have to replace one because, you know, I think maybe the second or third time I replaced the propeller, uh, the inside ring here just popped off, which means shitty pr prop nuts. Is that a deal breaker? Not really, but it is something to take note of. If you are purchasing these motors, it would really suck if you can't fly because you have no prop nut. That is like just something that would piss you off. It, it's, <laughs> it's really funny because it can happen sometimes. Something so cheap that will render you useless. So I highly recommend you get some extra prop nuts. And if Diatone or Mamba's watching, please just upgrade the prop nuts slightly. That would be great. Now let's talk about the motor's longevity and durability. Well, this will not be answered in this video because it's only been taken 20 to 25 lipos. So far, okay, no real crashes. So in that perspective, still too early to say anything. Um, now let's talk about the stack here. Now it's highly recommended if you use a 6S stack to add the low ESR capacitor that they provide you with. However, I didn't. And the reason why I didn't is because the honest truth is because I was lazy and I just want to see what happens. And that is the reason why I didn't do that. However, there is no noise in the video feed. And you'll be like, how is that even possible? Well, when you sit down and think about it, you'll figure it out. And what do I mean by that? Well, most of our VTXs are powered from what? The raw battery voltage or rarely a nine volt regulator. However, in this case, if you're using the complete stack from Hollybro, then you're gonna get the AT Lotl VTX that goes up to 100 milliwatts. And this is not powered by VBAT, this is powered by five volts. So that explains the absolutely clean video feed. However, when you watch DVR recording, you're gonna say it looks like shit. And I will totally agree with you on that. And the reason for that is, that day I was using the Sky Zones to record the DVR. So yeah, the DVR is really bad on the Sky Zones, but I wish I would have brought the HDOs. But anyways, uh, I do have more flights coming. This is one of the things in my stack pile when I go out flying, just to keep, you know, at least if I have more quads, I just at least put two more packs in, two more packs in every time I go fly or one pack, just thrash the living shit out of that battery and land if it's like the last flight of the day. 
and just keep updating you. So this thing still needs a little bit of tune. I did not tune it because I had a couple more other things to fly that day. And um, but it'll be tuned in the upcoming videos and in the second update review. I'm not going to replace any component on this. However, I might add a low ESR capacitor, but I think I'll do that after the tune. Overall, what do I think of this? Uh, it's still too early to say anything, but everything is working great. I've had no issues. Actually, I've been flying stock beta flight pids in that video that you're going to see. And uh, the punch is there. And um, yeah, it just flew great. And uh, it's going to be subjected to another update review because it's too early to really say anything about anything. And I've noticed that and that's the reason why I'm doing these videos. And it's not a final verdict. When the product's getting its final verdict, it'll be in the title of the video. And well, I'll have everything linked down below. Please check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And I also do have a Patreon. If you could support me there, that'd be awesome. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.